Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney on this channel. We answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting focused answers they need from an employment attorney. We have a question here from YouTube user 50, uh, Tech5280 who asks us, question, why might my attorney not want to respond to my employer's position statement? I didn't know this was a strategy. Question two, what is the EEOC doing behind the scenes during the investigation process? Okay. Um, well, listen, we'll answer question two first. What is the EEOC doing behind the scenes during the investigation process? Depends on what investigator you are assigned, but for the massive majority of investigators, the answer is almost nothing. They will do almost nothing. Um, generally speaking, they will lean heavily on the attorneys involved and let them do the work for them. And that's kind of, uh, How most, but not all, EEOC investigators will behave, will handle their their uh, investigative process. Now, as to your first question, and I'll read it again, why might my attorney not want to respond to my employer's position statement? I didn't know this was a strategy. So... A um, couple reasons. Best reason is your attorney wants to pull the case out of the EEOC, get your right to sue letter, and go on to federal litigation. And as long as you're okay with that, because that creates a public filing, but as long as you're okay with that, that's a great reason. Why, why spend time drafting a rebuttal that you could spend drafting the federal filings and pulling the right to sue letter? Additionally, why reveal arguments in a rebuttal that you could sit on and reveal later during a motion to dismiss opposition or summary judgment opposition. That That is a perfectly valid reason to not do a rebuttal. Now, sometimes we'll do the rebuttal anyways, even though we know we're going to go into litigation because you can, you can rattle, you can rattle certain employers and they'll freak out and start offering money because your rebuttal was uh, pretty good, right? So listen, there's a lot of reasons to still do a rebuttal. Um, if you think, even if you're going to litigation, there are reasons to do a rebuttal. If you think it could move move the football in terms of the settlement conversations, jostle something free, get get the conversation flowing. Like that's that's a good reason to invest the hours in the rebuttal. But it, if you don't believe that's the case, if you don't believe it's going to move anything, then cutting bait, asking the EOC for your right to sue letter. And getting the federal litigation faster is a great reason to not file a rebuttal. Now, that's the good reason. There's a couple of bad reasons why you might not file a rebuttal. The attorney might look at what was filed in the position statement and arrive at the conclusion that there's not much of a case here anymore. That happens. Um, it might be that the employer, like you said, you were never late. And the employer rolled in with time cards, video footage, and 30 witnesses that says you're late every day. There's not much point, potentially, it depends on the case, but if your whole thing was, they weren't firing me because I was late, I was never late. This was discrimination. And then we've got video and witnesses and time card stamps of you being late every day for a year. I don't know how great that discrimination case is going to go at this point, right? So some attorneys will be like, listen, jackass, you wasted my time and my money because I put money into this case. And there's nothing left of this case because you misled me. So I'm not going to waste any more time on this case that you lied to me to get me into, right? And that that is, listen, that happens. It absolutely happens. Um, sometimes, another bad reason why attorneys might not want to do rebuttals, they're busy. A lot of attorneys in this field, again, I, I have a couple of videos about this, they're smaller firms. They take on more cases than they can really work properly because the settlement rate is super high and sometimes you get easy settlements and people get greedy and they want more money. 
So they take more cases than they can work. And they get too busy, and they can't get everything done. Is that a reason why some attorneys might not do your rebuttal? Yes. Is that a really bad reason? Really shitty reason? Why an attorney might not do your rebuttal? Yes. Of course. That's not a good reason. I took too many cases and now I'm busy. Nobody cares, dude. Figure it out. Hire people. Get contractors. Get your buddies together. Do a, do a rebuttal writing party. Whatever it is. I, I don't care. But you, you owe people. If you take their case, you owe them something. Unless they lied to you. Unless they misled you. Unless unless the case is dead. Like, there's cases that are dead on arrival. We just gave that example, right? Um, I'm being fired because X, Y, and Z. Not because I was late every day. I was never late. You were late every day for a year. We proved it. Definitively. Oh, okay. Well, that case is dead on arrival. That, that's done, right? Like, there's no reason to throw more attorney hours after that case. No question. Um, and listen, I'm not saying the, the client in that hypothetical scenario who lied about being every late every day for a year. I'm not saying they're a bad person. I'm saying they kind of behave like a jackass in that one scenario, right? I get it. People get scared. You're losing your job. It's not an easy time. Sometimes you uh, you big things up a little bit. You tell a story that sounds good to get some help from an attorney, and then you don't fully understand that, like, well... There's video, there's timestamps, there's witnesses. Everybody knows you're late. It's it's provable. It's objective. It's not really in question, right? That happens a lot. And that, listen, that's going to happen. But uh, And in that scenario, I encourage the attorney to cut bait on your lying ass. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Listen, also, that case, it's probably still worth 5, 10, 15 like, um, it was, so, you know, it's not worth nothing. That attorney should still be trying to monetize that case for you, uh, get you out, right? Get you out of that case. Um, cause the, their, their duty is to you. And just because you were late all day, every day, doesn't mean the original claim wasn't valid. There could still be discrimination. It's probably not the reason they fired you. Because, you know, you were late every day for a year. But it's not mutually exclusive. During your time there, you could have experienced significant discrimination. And I suspect if you got this far, alleging that that's why you're fired, you, you did. Right? So what I would tell that attorney is, you might still want to do that rebuttal to get your client out with 5, 10, 15 grand. Because, um, just because your client had kind of a nonsensical story about why she or he was terminated doesn't mean there wasn't a very real discrimination claim in there, right? And that, that can be hard for attorneys, right? Like nobody likes hearing, hearing that from me where I'm like, well, listen, yeah, okay, your client misled you. And that's bad. And we're mad. We're all very mad. Er, grr. Um, but how mad can you really be at the person who just lost their job and is freaking out and needs to figure out how they're going to keep a roof over their head and feed their kids? Like people are in bad situations. They call employment attorneys and sometimes they, people, human beings in bad situations make bad decisions across the board. Been there, done that, got the hat. Um, so, although we're all grr mad grr about the lie doesn't mean the case doesn't have value, right? And I'm not saying bring a junk case. Don't bring a frivolous case. But, like, the termination aspect of your case might be shot. I would encourage you to drop it. It's done. But I'm assuming there was more to it than just the termination if you took the case, employment attorney. And if there's more to it, and some pieces of it are still alive, the fact that the client misled you is not a reason in of itself to dump the whole thing. Monetize what you can. Get your client a check. Assuming your client agreed. Like if your client's like, no, I want federal litigation. I will never accept a settlement even though I've been caught in a lie outright. Okay, drop that client. Drop that client on his or her head as fast as you can, right? Like that. that's a that's a client engaged in self-harm who's trying to claw you down with them, right? Um, but if that's not the case, the client's like, okay, my bad. My bad about the whole being late thing. I, I did lie to you. My bad. 
But this other stuff did happen. And like, you can see that we, we proved it a little bit. You can be Gur Mad Gur. At that client about the about the termination lie, the the tardiness lie, but they're not wrong. The case is still there; it still has a value. There's still viable claims in there that are non frivolous, and you can probably still monetize that in a field with a settlement rate over ninety eight percent when represented by an attorney, I believe. Um, I suspect you can still get that client a check, right? And part of getting that client a check might might be drafting a rebuttal even though you're so mad, right? I mean, nobody cares. If this job was easy, everybody would do it. Not easy. This is lucrative. So get over it. Get out there and get your client some money. And, and when you think about that client in the future... Think about like, think about it in a nice way. Oh my gosh, that client lied to us so bad. And we still got her paid. We still got him a check. Like, make it just make it a positive thing. I don't want you to monetize cases that aren't viable. I don't want you to bring claims against people who didn't engage in discrimination or sexual harassment. That's not what I'm saying. To be clear, that is not what I'm saying. But if there was legitimate discrimination in the workplace or legitimate sexual harassment in the workplace, don't let one messed up piece of the case lead you away from the piece of the case that is still wrongdoing and still viable and valuable. Also, I guess I'm talking to the attorney now. Like, Tech 5280, I guess I stopped answering your question and started talking to your attorney. I apologize. I'm rambling. I'm going to stop. Take care, everybody. Uh, if this video was helpful, like, subscribe, comment down below. Helps the channel to grow. Remember, almost everybody works, but not everybody wins. Be smart out there.